So the team are you know, relatively simple project uh, sketch models that uh, foster best practice design and operations. Later, I'll show you the uh, BRT scorecard, which was integrated in the BRT model, which uh, considers the quality of the BRT in the uh, calculation of the, the emissions, uh, reflect complex induced travel, uh, land use placeholders. Again, um, in some of the, the, the models, uh, there's one for actually for the BRT, the earlier one we had this, and the MRT, we, can, we have some placeholder there for um, extrapolating the impacts on the route or the corridor to a wider, um, to a wider scale. Um, and focus on the wide range of sustainable transport options. So, Later, I'll run you through the different models, what's currently available. Uh, promoting co-benefits, as I've said, some of the models would actually have um, calculations for um, reduction traditional air pollutants, uh, safety, and um, um, economic costs, actually. Easy and can be done even with low resources, so it's really about giving a structure to the calculations and um, giving that ability to the users to be able to come up with reasonable calculations for emissions reductions. No? Okay, so uh, I've mentioned this earlier, transport emission evaluation model for projects. This is just a snapshot of the homepage of the team BRT model. Um, can be pronounced as temp or temporary. Um, again, it's really for initializing the process. That was the main intention earlier. But uh, we've gone uh, as far as having the global environmental facility actually approve this and use this in the transportation projects. Um, also, the, the Asian Development Bank has used this in analyzing their portfolio. We have done work also with World Bank and um, the, the, in, the Inter-American Development Bank has included this uh, set of tools in the recommendations in terms of the methodologies for um, uh, calculating uh, the emissions and the emission savings from their transport portfolio as well. These are some of the partners, um, well, yeah, the partners who were involved in the whole process of developing the team models. We have the Asian Development Bank, the Institute for Transport and Development Policy, the World Bank, UN Habitat, Global Environment Facility, Veolia Environment from France, um, Cambridge Systematics, um, and of course, IGES has also supported some of our work. Uh, just to give you a history, sorry about this, um, just to give you a background of what has been the iterations as well. Um, the first concept was actually born out of our um, engagement with the Asian Development Bank. They wanted to look at their transport portfolio. This was the time that they were looking at um, developing the sustainable transport initiative that they have now. During that time, they wanted to look at the emissions impacts of their transport projects. They've done a lot of um, financing for roads. Uh, I think around 78 or 80 percent of their transport portfolio during that time was uh, on trans uh, roadways, so financing highways, urban roads, rural roads. Um, and we did calculations for them. I'm going to share with you some of the indicators that we've gotten from that uh, engagement. So there was an evaluation report that was done. Um, during that time, we, rea we realized that uh, the calculations were not enough. We, n we needed to put some user interface into the models. So if you wanted to roll it out into, you know, into the world, we wanted it to be more user friendly. So we got um, uh, support from uh, ITDP, Cambridge Systematics, UNEP, Climate Works. And this was actually um, approved by the Global Environmental Facility. So people or, or participants who are applying for the GEF funding, for tra or they have transportation projects applying for the GEF funding, um, they can use the temp models to, to calculate the emissions reductions for CO2 for those projects. And afterwards, we moved into integration of more features into the calculations and improvement 
of the user interface for some of the models, particularly the PRT one. I think the one that was forwarded or the one that is currently uploaded in the website is an older version. I apologize for that. But uh, we've, uh, if you go to the Dropbox folder, we've put there the, the updated version for the team PRT, which is a lot different in terms of um, interface from the, uh, the older version. We wanted to make it as easy as possible for users to input the data and uh, get the, the calculations uh, sheet uh, more, how do you say, it's more transparent and uh, more streamlined. And um, last year, we moved towards uh, integrating um, uh, the different sets of calculations into more like city-wide um, applications. So we have this, uh, what we call the TIMP City and the uh, Toolkit for Rapid Assessment of Mobility. I can share more details to you about it. It's basically a combination of the concepts in the different calculation modules. So you have the walkability, you have bike sharing, you have BRT. Um, it's a very simple way of, of calculating a, a set of projects for the city um, and to, to get insights out of that in terms of how much uh, would be the total emissions reductions for these projects. Uh, this is just a map of the, uh, the team applications that we know of because um, this uh, set of tools is actually public. Um, most of them are uploaded in the website. People can actually download them and use them without our, you know, without our knowledge. Uh, as far as we know right now, the, the, the BRT applications, for example, have been like 13 applications globally. Um, yeah, and more than 30 in total um, in, through different mechanisms. Some of them are actually private individuals or researchers. Some of them are from the GEF. Some of them are uh, from the ADB or the World Bank portfolio. Um, again, the main concept of ASIF comes into play when we talk about the uh, calculations inside the uh, team models. Um, these are some of the, the, the parameters no, that we try to look at uh, in terms of the activity, the structure, the intensity, the fuel. For some of the models, we have, of course, the number of trips that are being done uh, and also being affected by the transportation project. What's the average trip lengths of the, the trips? Uh, what are the average speeds? Uh, because speeds uh, have um, impacts in terms of fuel economy or fuel efficiency of the vehicles and also in terms of uh, emissions. So um, we have to take those into account. In terms of the, tr the structure, we talk about the mode shares. Uh, what percentage of the trips are being done by different modes? So how, how many of them are being done by cars, by two-wheelers, by walking, by cycling? Very important uh, set of data. Average occupancies, as I've mentioned earlier, it affects a lot in the real fuel uh, efficiency of the vehicles when it comes to you know, per capita or uh, per person kilometer efficiencies. Um, how many people are being transported in one single trip is actually very important. Uh, the fee vehicle fuel split, um, again, um, it's important to know what types of fuel are being used by the vehicles. And the vehicle emission standard split, it's, it's also important to know what percentage of the vehicle is uh, uncontrolled or pre-euro, or if you have pre-euro 1, euro 2, euro 3, and so forth. This is mainly important for calculating the other emissions, particularly the PM and the NOx. Intensity, of course, we talk about the fuel efficiencies and the uh, emission factors. Um, the way the calculation works uh, normally, um, we have here, so the ASIF and the ASIF, uh, ASI, or ASI framework, the avoid, the avoid strategies would really try to um, make a difference in terms of the activity. So it's actually reducing the number of trips, reducing the demand for, the, for making the trips, and uh, reducing or avoiding the need for motorized travel. So you have your, you know, things like improvement of, um, or, or provision of, uh, how do you say this, teleworking uh, for some of the companies. Um, the shift would, affect the structure of the transportation system, the mode shares particularly. Um, if you're building a BRT project, 
if you're you know uh, improving the walkability infrastructure, the biking infrastructure, you're basically shifting the demand from motorized uh, travel towards these more environmentally friendly modes. And the improved section of it would uh, target the intensity and the fuel. So it's all about improving the fuel efficiencies of the um, of the fleet and uh, looking at more uh, environmentally friendly fuels or shifting to lower carbon intensive fuels would also be a strategy under improve. Uh, in terms of um, the framework, again, uh, this is similar to um, the other um, graphs that you've seen earlier in Total <coughs> Sun and uh, Eric Sun's presentations. Um, we talk about the business as usual and the alternatives. So this one depiction of um, how do people move from origin to destination. So what's your usual way of doing things? So you have here in the business as usual, how do they, do they make the travel? How do they make the travel? How far do they travel? Um, in totality, what is the mode share in terms of going from the origin to the destination? And you have the project scenario. You have different alternatives. No? So you can either you know, build a highway. You can build a PRT. You can build a metro. Um, or you can have uh, other things in there. You, know, you can improve the walkability, improve cyclability, things like this. So what we're trying to do here in the calculations, we have this. We have uh, business as usual, what would have happened if the project was not there, and a uh, calculation set for the alternatives. NMT start. And uh, the emission savings from the project would actually be the difference between these two. So uh, what would be the no projects scenario emissions versus the project scenario or intervention emissions. And the, the project scenario emissions would consist of emissions from operation. So emissions from the project vehicles, for example, like if you're running, if you're implementing a BRT, so how much um, would they actually emit? So that's taken into consideration. And also um, uh, emissions from construction. Uh, tomorrow I'll share some of the indicators like for, for, um, for some of the types of projects like MRT. The construction emissions is actually very large and uh, it has to be taken into account. Um, several years of you know, operating the system equates to the construction emissions. And uh, yes, okay. If you go to the website, uh, that was forwarded. There are different tools that are available there. Um, we'll, we'll have to check with the, the uh, upgrading. I think some of the um, models there, we need to change the version. No? Um, I'll just coordinate with uh, Cleaner Asia. But we do have models for uh, the roads. The roads model actually uh, have uh, three different types. So you can do one for highways. Uh, urban roads and rural roads. Um, it's I think in terms of uh, the the calculation process, this one is um, a bit more complicated than the others. Um, this has been heavily used by the Asian Development Bank. Um, we do have modules for bikeways and bike sharing, so it's more of like a sketch level analysis. Uh, it gives you, you know, it, it asks you for things like uh, how many um, how many bikes will be in the bike sharing system and you would get uh, also, you know, uh, things like default uh, averages in terms of the length of trips being made by the bike, uh, bike users and um, you have also a scorecard there, at least for the bike sharing scheme um, model. Tomorrow I can probably show you some of these aside from the BRT model um, just to give you a rundown. But you can actually go to the website and download some of these uh, models. Oh, this one, this, this is a picture of a, uh, an overloaded jeepney in the Philippines. So it's, it's yeah. We, we talk about, you know, average occupancies. <laughs> Yeah, just uh, to give you the real life picture, I, I think in, in, in also in um, 
some of the developing countries, you'd have these types of situations. But for BRT project, I'm going to show you uh, in detail tomorrow how it works, what are the parameters that you need to be able to run it, and what are the things that you can do with it and things that you can't do with it. And uh, this one is very close to our heart, improvement of walkability. Um, there's a module there uh, which was actually, if you check under the uh, Jeff website, this was uh, the most recent application was from Kathmandu. They used uh, the model to calculate the emission savings from uh, improving some of their walkways. Um, so again, uh, improvement of non-motorized transport would hopefully shift some of the trips, particularly these shorter trips um, that are currently being made using motorized modes. It's funny, we were working with one of the cities in the Philippines. Um, you know, the, some of the representatives from the local governments are saying that the, the culture of uh, walking is actually dying there because even the 15 meter walks are being done by three wheelers or tricycles. Um, it's it's a combination of different factors, but the lack of actually the the lack of uh, walking infrastructure, quality walking infrastructure, um, adds up to that uh, certain problem as well. Um, we do have modules for metros, LRTs, and intercity railway projects. Um, um, probably for for Ho Chi Minh, you can take a look at the. I can give you the the latest file for for metros for your LRT. You can probably take a look at that if you want to to build that in some of your analysis. Um, we'll be glad to, to work with you. And uh, we do have uh, travel demand management strategies. So commuters, oh sorry, commuter strategies. Um, uh, things like teleworking. So if a company wants to implement a teleworking scheme, um, you know, um, allowing some of their employees to work a number of days in a year in their, you know, outside the office, what would be the impacts in terms of CO2 emissions? Compressed work week, there's also a module for that. Um, employer suppo support in terms of carpooling and bicycle program. So it's also integrated there. In terms of uh, pricing, uh, we have uh, parking pricing uh, module and parking density. Um, we, we also have a module for eco-driving. And the last one is on the uh, pay-as-you-drive insurance. So this, uh, actually, these sets of models are the ones which were primarily developed by Cambridge Systematics. So what they've done, they've reviewed a lot of um, these strategies that are currently being conducted worldwide and they came up with um, elasticity factors and how these um, certain strategies can actually affect the demand for transportation and included that in the calculation so you can also take a look at that um, yeah this one the team city and the tram these are more again more integrated um, moving towards more um, city-wide analysis as mentioned also by Toto earlier, this is also the, you know, the way that uh, IGES is approaching um, the whole um, uh, emissions reductions um, issue in the future. Um, for Tim City and the transport, uh, uh, sorry, toolkit for rapid assessment of mobility, it's, it's we're talking about here about comprehensive mobility plans, assessing these plans, and what would be the impact in the future. Um, but uh, these are, how do you say, v these are again sketch level analysis for doing the emissions reductions for these different types of transportation projects. As you would see tomorrow, these are some of the uh, more important features of the team models. Um, we have their um, analysis for the BAU or the WID. Uh, without project case and the with project case. In some of the models, you have the sketch model and the detailed analysis models, such as the BRT1. Um, as the names would imply, the detailed analysis models would need more data, but uh, would lead to more robust numbers than the sketch one. Um, scorecards are integrated for BRT and bikeway. Um, the BRT scorecard 
is based on uh, the the BRT Gold Standard, which was actually developed by ITDP, the Institute for Transport Development Study, and it takes into account the impacts of uh, quality in the BRT system and how it impacts the ridership. So it just adds up a certain factor um, based on the, the scores that you would give for the BRT. Um, emissions from construction and operations for the project are included. Uh, dynamic baselines are considered uh, in the projections, so it considers um, growth in terms of the travel demand, and you can actually do some modifications in terms of the um, the fleet characteristics in the future, what would be the fuel split in the future, what would be the emission standard split in the future, fuel efficiencies you can vary, things like these, and also emission factors. Uh, in terms of the emissions, currently we have uh, CO2, PM NOx, uh, but yeah, I mean, in, in future iterations, we can um, be more holistic and do the other emissions as well. As I've mentioned earlier, we have, you know, CO, we have uh, VOC, hydrocarbons that we can include in the calculations. Um, we have some calculations for reducing fatalities and uh, accidents. Um, um, and uh, of course, fuel savings, you would get that also from the calculation sheets. Um, also travel time savings, uh, particularly for the, well, we have this for the roads module and also for the, um, the big in infrastructure projects such as, you know, MRT and BRT is also there. Um, good thing about this, these are Excel based and with simple out input output tables and uh, the defining feature of this is that it's very transparent and the uh, users can actually go into the calculation sheet and check the the calculations they can um, modify it if they want it's not a uh, black box so it's uh, user friendly and it's uh, very much transparent this was the the, the point that we had to um, embed in, in the development of the, the team models before, just to make it more um, really accessible in terms of the calculations and in terms of the results. Um, and also, good thing about this is that we have some default values that we suggest to the users in case that they don't have the data uh, locally available for their projects, so things like uh, fuel efficiencies, emission factors, and um, uh, um, other pertinent uh, data that would be needed. Um, just in case that these are not available, they can borrow from the default values. But uh, we always uh, say that the default values are the last option, and we would actually encourage the uh, collection of data um, locally for the calculations to be done. And uh, you can calculate total footprint uh, for the project. So you have the, the operation emissions and the construction emissions and uh, the savings from the business as usual um, scenario. Okay, for, yeah, uh, for tomorrow, we'll be really going through the, the BRT TIMP model. And uh, first uh, in the morning, I'll give you another uh, round of introduction, uh, more on the insights that we have um, gathered from the past years in terms of the development, in terms of the application of the TIMP models for the different projects. We'll give you a summary of the important factors that you need to consider if you are going to be using this in the future. Um, and in the afternoon, we'll be doing a live demo of the TIMP PRT module um, to really to, to explain how the thing works, what are the different components, um, what would you actually need to do to be able to uh, input the parameters, what are the, uh, um, uh, the features of the model, and what are the, the limitations. I would like to thank you again for being a, a very patient audience, for, for listening, and I hope you, you've uh, learned something about the team, but uh, particularly tomorrow, no? we'll, we'll go through it. Uh, in detail. So thank you very much for listening.